Good morning. My name is Guido Janssen, and I'm going to teach you how to get customers to crave your website. Techniques that can make even the toughest consumer want to buy from you. And this is how I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to talk and introduce you to the workings of the, of the human brain, the errors that we make. And then I'm going to show you how you can apply those techniques to your, to your website, to your Magento shop. And then I'm going to do a short outlook into the future where I think we're going with this area of expertise. And I'm a psychologist and um, I work for companies and I help them reach their optimal online performance by looking into human behavior. And I'm very excited to be able to share all those things uh, with you, the really successful tests we've been doing and uh, help increase conversion. And I'm even more excited to be here at first Me Magento in this country, since I've also been organizing Me Magento events in my home country, in the Netherlands, since 2009. So it's really cool to be here and to see so many people show up. Um, but before I get started, I often get people uh, at my session, or after my session, and they say, well, <laughs> Tom is already smiling. I get people asking me, well, those techniques, uh, those are nice psychology tricks, and those psychology tricks, they, they only work on, to put it nicely, not really smart people. So they don't, they don't work on me. I don't fall for those stupid little tricks. So we'll have to see if it works on you. So I'm going to ask you all right now to stand up and yes. I hope everyone can still see me. Okay. I want you to ask to do exactly as I do with my hands, uh, but be careful, don't hit the person in front of you. Very close. Don't do that. Put your hands out like this. Yes. Do exactly as I do. Clip your hands. Very good. Perfect audience. All awake. Great. Um, put your thumbs down. Okay. Repeat after me. So half of you has their left hand up, half of you has their right hand up. Put your left hand up. Yes. You put them over each other and you interlock them. If you did it right, your left thumb should be on top. I still see some people struggling here with the difference of left and right. <laughs> your, left hand, your, your left thumb should be up. Then you put your index finger out. Yes, index finger out. Now, if you are, if I wasn't able to persuade you, if you're that smart, that good, you would all be able to do this. <laughs> no one? Okay, you can sit down. Thank you. Okay, so you can be persuaded. It's really powerful stuff. Um, First, a small introduction of persuasion. What are we talking about? I think this is a really nice definition. An attempt to change attitude, behavior, or both without using coercion or deception. We're not trying to get people to buy something they don't want. Because then you get returns and they won't be happy. But there are a lot of roadblocks in the way for people. Maybe they do want something, but they don't know it yet they don't know yet to buy from you. So when we look at psychology or persuasion and usability, usability is about removing the roadblocks, removing the friction on your website, 
and by uh, persuading people, we try to increase their motivation to buy. It's important to do both. And when when motivation is really high on the right, there on the right, and you have when the consumer is really motivated to do something, the ability can be low. But if you have a lot of competitors and uh, consumers are easily distracted to go somewhere else, motivation might be low and the ability needs to be high. So you need to figure out where you are. And you always need triggers like online marketing to trigger people to act. I was in uh, San Francisco uh, a couple of years ago and when you go out in a city, any city, uh, you, you probably get people to sell you something. Uh, it can be a newspaper, it can be a subscription or a donation for, for Greenpeace, or I was walking outside here yesterday, everyone wanted my money and changed it. Uh, that's apparently really popular here. Uh, someone wants something from you. And usually they don't get me, they just they, they ask directly, do you want to exchange money, do you want to do a subscription or whatever. It's really easy to say no. When I was in San Francisco, I was there for, to get the, the uh, award from, from then eBay uh, for uh, organizing the Magento events and organizing the Dutch uh, Magento event. Uh, I got an award for that. It had nothing to do with the presentation, just want to show off. Um, but I was in San Francisco and I was walking through the street, standing in a corner. Obviously, the tourist there uh, didn't know where to go, the map wasn't working. So I was standing there looking around. Then a person, uh, which later on uh, uh, was a, uh, appeared to be a homeless guy, he approached me and he started giving me advice. He told me where to go for the good food. He told me where to go shopping to get a gift for my girlfriend. And he told me, uh, if I go out at night, don't go to that neighborhood because it's really dangerous. Don't go there. So he was giving me all this free advice. And we were talking about like five minutes. And I was getting all this free advice from him. And it kind of made me a bit uncomfortable because he was giving me all this free advice, which I didn't ask for. And then he asked, could you give me some money? to go uh, to the other side of the city with the metro. Could you buy me a ticket? And what the other people in the other countries didn't get me to do, he succeeded. I wanted to return the favor. I wanted to buy this ticket for him because he was giving me all this free advice. And this is one of the powers of persuasion. Get your customers, give them something they want, and they will return the favor. Um, I'll talk about that one also later. So, why am I here? You're not here for me, I guess, I guess for, the, for, the, for the topic, but uh, to give you some, some background, uh, I, work, I, I studied psychology, applied cognitive psychology, so I'm only using the uh, part. Um, the image is really bad on the screen, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a network map of all the connections uh, in my LinkedIn profile. So every dot is a person, then you can see networks emerging. You have the bottom left, the green is the international Magento community. Bottom right is the company I worked at. I, I did stuff with, uh, with Joomla. I, I swim, a group of people there. Um, and these are some companies I work for. Currently I work as an uh, optimization specialist at Euroforest. We sell flowers online uh, over 20 years already. And I have my own startup uh, user legion to help people do uh, online user testing. And I help companies uh, looking at the data, looking at customer behavior, testing that, uh, using my knowledge of psychology to explain that and to optimize it, and prove it through A-B testing. You have to prove something is working for you. Uh, a technique might be working on, on the side of your competitor or a different product. It might not always work the same. So this is what I'm going to talk about. Theory. If you're trying to sell 
whole mind, you have a big issue. Because it, it really sucks to sell the mind. It's really low if you compare it to offline. Um, offline conversion rate is for, for retail shops. Offline conversion rates 20 to 25 percent. Online conversion rates much lower. These are some examples of very good e-commerce rates, conversion rates. Amazon, we all know that one. Staples, all the supplies, 8 to 11 percent conversion rate. Online, we're talking about. Pro Flowers, competitor of your first. 15.8% conversion rate online. Uh, large size women, 25.3% conversion rate online. And this is not a funky German website. Um, this is an American supermarket. They sell online. And they have over 40% conversion rate online. But still, if you compare it, how many people walk into a supermarket and get out without a bag of groceries? Not many. So still, compared to offline, online really sucks. So why is that? Um, we're missing a lot online, but we do have offline. Some examples, just some examples. Secondary input, uh, you can smell your stuff online. You can smell the products. You can try them on. It's impossible to do online. Um, there's no commitment at all online. When you go offline, you put stuff in your, in your basket, you're committed to going to the cashier and pay for it. You, online, you can put everything in your basket and just walk away. You can do that. Luckily, people don't do that offline. It will be a mess. And personalization, we are getting better and better at it online, but it's still really hard to do. If you've been buying your cheese from this guy for the last 10 years, he knows what you like. He knows the wines you like. If something new comes in, he can recommend it to you or not. And recommend the wine that goes with it, the food that goes with it. It's really easy for him, if he knows you, to personalize his products uh, for you. So that's hard to do online. Uh, there is a solution, of course. Uh, most of our decisions are unconscious. A lot of scientists still disagree on, on the exact percentage, but the way you tie your shoelaces, the way you walk, the way you open the door, the way you drive uh, your car, the way you drive your, your, your uh, bicycle, uh, the way you get up in the morning, the way you dress yourself, you don't have to consciously think about that. And it's a good thing. You would, be, you would be crazy if you have to consciously think about those things. People uh, with brain lesions, some people have that disability that they can't make a decision. It's terrible, it's really hard for them to, to get around. Um, some examples of those shortcuts in our brain. Something is expensive, we think it's good quality. When someone is wearing a white coat, it's probably a doctor is probably telling the truth. When we put something on eBay, we, we polish it to make it look newer. And when something is familiar, it feels safe. And the other way around, when something is unfamiliar, it feels unsafe. When something is new, it feels unsafe. And these shortcuts in our brain, we have those because we don't always have the time and the knowledge to make a complete, full, informed decision. And it's not needed most of the time, so that's good. Um, we call this in psychology, we call these heuristics, uh, automated thoughts, intuition. Um, and like I said, in maybe 95% of the cases, this is a good thing. But in some cases, those lead to an error. And we call this a cognitive bias. And in those cases, we can use that when you sell to someone, you can use those biases from people. That's sorry. Um, because we're not always aware of that. That's the scary part and the good part for you as a merchant. The availability heuristic is a heuristic that says the easier it is to recall something, 
the more likelihood we assign to that occasion. So, these are, here are some really uncomfortable situations. Casualties from deadly situations worldwide. Four situations. We have terrorism, all casualties worldwide from terrorism. All casualties worldwide from airplane crashes. All casualties worldwide from any natural disaster combined. And we have the swimming. Now, if I would ask you which picture doesn't belong here, I'm doing a guess. <coughs> you, you choose the swimming pool. But why doesn't the swimming pool belong here? It's safe, it feels safe, yeah. But it doesn't belong here because there are much more people drowning than the other three situations combined. But why is that? Because we, we read about terrorism, we read about an airplane crash, and we read about natural disasters because they, when they happen, they don't happen that often. So it's really newsworthy, so it gets into the newspaper, and there's usually a lot of people involved. The, the, the swimming pool, when someone's drowning, is usually one person. It happens so often, you don't hear about that. It's not newsworthy, you don't hear about it. This, when you build up a bias, that the other three situations are much more dangerous. Well, it's not. It's much da more dangerous to, to drown, or even to go into the street to drive. It's much more dangerous. So there's a big difference between online and offline, and we have many cognitive biases, and we're not usually aware of most of them. So let's apply them. There's a book by um, Robert Cialdini, quite popular, uh, 30 years old already, so there's no internet in the, in the book. Um, and he argues that there are six main weapons of influence, six techniques uh, that are that you can apply to convince people. And there are way more, but uh, Cialdini, he's a psychologist, you know, you know, six is the number we can remember, so we picked six. But there are hundreds of those techniques. We're going to go, go through three of them. Um, but always be testing. I'll show you why. Always be testing. It might work on one product, not on the other, or your competitor, or one website, not the other. So the first, uh, the first one is actually the one I, the story I started with, with the homeless guy helping me in, in, San, uh, in San Francisco. He was uh, giving me all this information for free, and I wanted to return the favor. That's what this technique is about. So give your customers something, give them information, give them knowledge, uh, give them free uh, sample products, uh, give them the feeling they need to return the favor. And this especially works when you're the first, when it's unexpected, and if your competitors are not doing this. If every competitor of you is giving something away for, for free to your consumers, the consumers start to expect it. It's normal. It's not special anymore. You don't evoke the feeling of them wanting to return something. Second from Shildini is commitment and consistency. Uh, when you go into the supermarket today and you buy Pepsi, there's a really high chance that the next time you go to the supermarket and buy Cola, it's going to be Pepsi, not Coca Cola. People want to be, or tend to be, consistent. It's an example of uh, promotion of driver safety. Um, they have two streets and a really big sign. They want people uh, to place in their yards to promote driver safety. And the researchers, they went to the, to the homeowners, and in one street, um, they got 20% of the people said, okay, put it in my yard. And the other street, they had 80% of the people saying, okay, put this really big uh, board in my, in my yard. And why the difference? In the, in the second street, the researchers went there a week before with a small plate uh, promoting driver safety, asking those homeowners, can you put this in your window to promote driver safety? So they convinced those people Okay, I'm a person that's promoting driver safety, and people tend to be consistent. So if you go there next week with a much larger request, it's hard for them to say no, because they are a person that promotes driver safety. 
So start with a small request first and follow up with a bigger request. Um, this is an example with MailChimp. The premium model is based on that. You first get uh, people to start using it, and then when they start using it, it's much harder to go away. And that's what Magento is also about. It's open source. You can all start using it. It's a huge user base using the free uh, service of Magento, and then we upsell to the services or, uh, or an enterprise version. Social proof. Social proof is about that we, as, a, as human beings, tend to look at what others are doing and are influenced by that. I have a fun video for that. Let's see if the audio is working. It's an experiment. A no, long time ago, it's like black, black, black and white. Do we have audio? Do we have audio or no? Well, I can explain what's happening. You see, uh, th these are the experimenters uh, entering uh, the elevator. And this guy, the middle guy, he's not into the experiment. He doesn't know what's happening. But they are all entering the elevator, standing with the back to the door, which should be unusual. So you see this guy. He is really troubled by the fact that everyone in the experiment is that way. He's looking at you know, that watch is just bullshit because he just wants to use it as an excuse to turn it off. And eventually he turns back. And then someone else in the other brother, they're doing it again. And this guy apparently has been in groups before. He notices everyone is going to turn like that. He notices this is weird, and then he decides, oh well, <laughs> let's go with it. So then the final guy, this is group pressure, right? Just looking at others, what others are doing, and going to do it. This guy already turned his back. They close the elevator, and it turned. They. Uh, the other way around. <laughs> what? So we do it again. We turn around. <laughs> and the guy in the middle just follows. Now, um, we're going to go up a couple of stairs. And um, turn again. And the middle guy is not in the middle. He has no idea why he's doing it. And then they take off their heads. Okay. Now they're gonna see if they can return it. Okay, let's put that there. It's amazing what you can do with group pressure. It's really fun, and we can apply it online, right? That's why we show the, 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 the Facebook and the Twitter buttons how many followers we have. That's why we do it. It's social proof. Um, showing reviews about products. Showing people what others. Are doing. Um, when someone uses your product, another another customer, someone who's, who's already a customer, show how they are benefiting using your product or service. Um, show who those other users are. Show you have customers. Who are they? And um, with uh, with Amazon, what are other customers doing? With your product, or what did they eventually buy when looking at this product? Testimonials. Um, but like I said, always be testing. We apply this technique, adding, adding social proof to products on a banking website. Um, and a bank has different kind of products, right? They have socially good products like a, a mortgage or um, uh, opening a savings account, that's positive, that's something you tell your friends about. They also have loans. A loan is not something you, you should... If my refrigerator broke down so I need a loan from the bank, that's not something I'm going to tell my friends about. That's not something I'm proud of. So, so there are different products in a bank. And within all those products we added this sentence in the last month. This is the number of customers 
that bought this product or requested information about this product. There was a real, real number. And then we saw that for those socially acceptable products, adding social proof worked really well. Adding social proof to socially awkward products did not work or negative on the conversion. So social proof can be really powerful to make sure you test it. And social proof is really effective when you the group that is showing the social proof you can, you can relate to those persons. And when you're uncertain, when you're inexperienced. If you are the person in your in your friend zone that knows everything about wine you're not going to listen about, you're not going to be influenced about social proof of your friends showing what wine they like. They are stupid, you are the wine expert. You're not going to listen to them. But if you're unexperienced, you are going to be influenced by your friends. So that's social proof. Authority. Now, authority is a, a special kind of social proof. It's about not the, the, the numbers, it's about the specific uh, company or person showing the social proof. So maybe if a famous uh, football player promoting a product. Liking, really hard to do uh, uh, online. Uh, liking is about getting consumers to like you as a, uh, as a company. And the easiest way to do it actually is use your already existing customers to tell their friends. Because they already like their friends. Well, I hope they like their friends. Yeah. Maybe you have other issues that you don't. Um, but get, get your existing customers to, to promote you and, uh, and use that to your advantage. And the last one from Cialdini is if there's a limited supply of something, we want it even more. Regardless, this is what uh, uh, group deal websites are all about. Have uh, only limited supply, only limited for the next two hours or two days or we only have 50. That's bullshit, but it works. Um, we, this was tested in a, in a restaurant, however, oh, sorry, in a, in a supermarket, and they, uh, they, the discount was on uh, soup, soup cans. Um, they had a everyone got a 10% discount on soup. But they had two different versions of the experiment. On the first day, they, there was no limit. 10% discount regardless of the number of cans you bought as a consumer. The second version, you get a 10% discount but only for 12 cans. So what happened? In version A, that an average of 3 cans sold per person. In version B, had an average of 7 cans sold per person. Just by adding the limitation might feel it's scary as a merchant to limit something because you might think, well, then maybe some, someone wants 30 and I'm missing out on that one sale. But in general, overall, you will sell more. And scarcity can be, can be anything. It can be time, it can be supply, it can be access to something like private sales uh, in, in Magento, just giving access to a certain group of people to access your website. Like I said, these were, these were the six from, from Cialdini. Read this book, it's really good. Um, it's not just these six. Uh, there are many more. Uh, I have some here for you. I'm going to show you three. Uh, if you want more, there's a, the, the presentation is online, so you can get check them out. All of them. I'm going to show you three right now. So this is about um, not necessarily product you're selling or service you're selling, but everything around it, the context, its perceptual contrast. Um, and the anchoring and adjustment effect is about anchoring someone at a, maybe a high price, and then the rest looks much cheaper. Uh, they, they, psychologists tested this by letting people that had a, a product, the product was around $50. And that product people people didn't know it was fifty dollars, uh, but they did a test, and on average, people rated this product as being around fifty dollars. So then they did the next experiment. 
they ask people to write down the last two numbers of your social security number. And if you have a low two digits of your social security number, people rated this product as much cheaper. And when people got to write down the social security number and it was high, like 85, and then rated this product, they rated it much higher than $50. Which is weird, because it's the same product. But anchoring someone on a high or low number makes them perceive what comes after in a different way. So if I'm selling wine, I have three bottles of wine, and I'm going to a party with my friend, a friend of mine. I'm not uh, really good at wine, so I don't really know. So I, I see this on display, $8, $30, $20 wine. I have no clue. Uh, $8, I don't want to be seen as a cheap-ass friend. So I'm not going to buy the $8 wine. $20? He's not that good of a friend, so <laughs> let's, let's not do that. So I'm going to buy $13 wine. That's what most people do in this situation. So if I'm selling the wine, what should I do to get more people to buy the $20 wine? At a much more expensive version. People go through the same process. $8, it's not, I don't want to be seen as cheap. $45, it's not that good of a friend. And more people buy the $20 wine. Don't be scared to add something that's really expensive to your website. It makes the rest look much cheaper. I did this at The Economist. It's a magazine. They have an online subscription, they have an offline subscription, and they have a combined subscription. And they had all three of these on their website. And these were the prices, and these were the subscription rates. 16% choose the web, no one choose the print subscription and 84% uh, choose for web and print combination. It's logical, right? Why would you go for the print subscription if you can get web included? So at The Economist they thought, well, if it's not selling anyway, let's remove it. We're not selling it. No one's buying it. Let's just remove it. This is what happened. It completely switched. Uh, because that, that product that no one sold, no one bought, made the others look much more interesting. This is what we call in psychology the ugly brother effect. Um, this was tested on a group of women. They got uh, pictures of three men, the, the, the top one or the bottom one, and they had to rate which guy the women uh, liked best. And what happened was, when we had Tom and we had Jerry, and we had an ugly version of, a Photoshop version of one of them. So when we have Tom and Jerry and an ugly version of Jerry, the women liked the normal version of Jerry best. So the normal version stood out, because we had an ugly version, that made the normal version look much better. And the other way around, when we had Tom and an ugly version of Tom, people, the, the, the women didn't like Jerry anymore, they liked Tom much better, because of the early version, which made the normal version look much better. So, tonight, when you're at the after party, go with a person that looks like you, but slightly uglier than you. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest rate of success. Although, how much time do I have? Almost nothing. Almost nothing? Yep. That, that's not much time. <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to skip this one. Um, I'm going to show the next one. It's a lot of time. Uh, the power of it goes. Uh, people, the experiment, people standing in line for a copier machine. And the student goes to the first one in line and asks them a question, basically to skip the line and go first. He has five copies to make. And there are three different versions of the, the question the student asked the first person in line. The first one, may I use the copier? And it's still surprising to me, but in 60% of the cases, he's allowed to skip the line. I think that's, that's kind of high. But still, a different version, may I use the copier because I'm in a rush? You add a reason, and it's a valid reason. 
94% of the cases is allowed to skip the line. Now this one, may I use a copier because I have to make some copies? That's what it's there for. That's what we're all here for. Um, so he adds a reason, but it's a bullshit reason. And still, 93% of the cases is allowed to skip the line. So adding the reason really helps. This was, for example, you can do Tom shoes, what they do, if you buy shoes there, um, they, you don't only buy shoes there, they give away a shoe for a child in need. If you buy a pair from them, they will go uh, give a pair away. That's another reason I can explain to my girlfriend why I bought shoes here, not somewhere else. So like I said, there are, there are much more uh, techniques you can use if you uh, look into those biases. So, small look into the future, really quick. Uh, right now we are optimizing for the average customer. Uh, the problem being that there are a lot of individual differences between customers, uh, but people do tend to be consistent. So if I'm influenced by my friends, I, it doesn't really matter if I'm buying a TV or wine or underwear. I'm going to be influenced by my friends. Um, and for the future, we see more and more uh, companies uh, and, and online systems uh, knowing that. They, they see, okay, you are this person, we see you are influenced by this and this, so we're going to tailor this approach to you. This is an example what you can do. If, you, if you're a person who have more uh, videos on my website, I'm going to show you more and more videos. If you're a person that uh, likes to, to look at all the social features we have, or uh, look at what your friends are doing on our website, I'm going to show you more and more of that. And Magento uh, already has a lot of extensions doing it. Magento Enterprise has a lot of integrations uh, uh, with those or doing it uh, by itself already. These are some systems that also do this, that can also integrate with Magento. So, to wrap up, uh, the hierarchy, make sure your technology works, make sure your functionality works, make sure your usability and persuasion uh, works, do it in that order. It doesn't make sense if your website is technologically not working to, to go for persuasion. Um, if it is, it probably is, because you wouldn't be here, and usability and persuasion is probably the next thing to do, an experiment. Like I said, uh, different techniques might work differently on different customers. Get to know your customer. So there are a lot of books you could you could read about this if you want. Um, uh, I'll be here all day, including the after party, so I hope to see you there. And um, you can go to my blog uh, for for some more articles. And if you want to know more, approach me. I'll talk to you. I'm happy to help you. And like I said, I'm really excited uh, that. We've been uh, here at, at Mi Magento in Argentina. And this is kind of it's the last video. <laughs> this is a video from the, from the Sasquatch Music Festival. And this, the, guy, the guy standing in the middle, <coughs> that is you all. That's a lone nut. And you are the lone nut. You, you guys took the risk to come to a first Mi Magento event. And although he's not done that, he'll be dancing like this tonight. And it's what's important, it's social proof again. Social proof. Here is his first follower. And his first follower is really important. And you are the first followers, basically. And show to others what you are doing. Show to others, tweet about this, put it on Facebook, put it wherever, share with your friends what you're doing right here. No matter how crazy it may look right now, it looked crazy in the Netherlands in 2009. But then we start sharing, and we start showing off to people, and there's probably some alcohol involved here, I don't know. Uh, and there's number three. There's number three. There's not a follower. And that's really great. And they are having fun. They are showing. It. Everyone else is sitting around. That's fine. They're not using Magento yet. Uh, <laughs> leave, leave them. They will be, they will be, because we're showing we are successful. We are good at what we're doing. 
uh, it's awesome to be in this in this community, and also to be in this group. And here we have number five, six, seven, eight, and they're all showing, they're all having a party. And at a certain point, you'll see people are rushing in to be still in the early adopter group. And people keep rushing, seeing what we're doing, seeing the great fun we have, the great success we have with our business. And at a certain point, it will be weird for people, you, you reach a tipping point. It's weird for people to still sit down and it's, it's normal to stand up, show what you're doing and have fun. And I wish you a lot of fun today. Thank you very much.